how are you? And may God bless you. My name is Stephen Anguni Kimango uh, from Deliverance Turkistan Vipers, Ruiru. Uh, and I'm happy to have this time with you and to share the good word of the Lord. And it's my joy to share with you a message that is uh, in my heart, in the heart of God. Uh, I think like now we have the COVID-19 uh, um, you know, disease. And this is a message of hope. It's a message of taking us to a place where we need to stay. So uh, God has given me a word. And I love this word. The word is, the main work is worship. The main work is worship. It is a question you and I can ask ourselves. What is our main work on earth? What's our main work? And, and I hear in the spirit, I hear by the word of God, that our main work is worship. Worship, worship. I want to read a Bible verse that uh, we all know very well. Genesis 1, 26. And the Bible says, and then God said, let us make man our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. <coughs> <coughs> he created them. And then God blessed them. You know, when, I, when I think of that, I always ask myself, God creating me in his own image. God creating me in his own image. Wow, wow. I've been asking myself questions many times when I worship and pray. Why am I made, created, fashioned, or framed in the image of God? And I got five answers. And the five answers are number one is for good relationship with God. Number two, for good fellowship. Number three, for good friendship. Number four, for good worship. And number five, to put things in order. That those five reasons are key, there are many others, why we are made in the image of God. And I want to, to remind yourself and myself that uh, it, is, it is wonderful that we are made in the image of God. So among these five reasons, whether relationship, fellowship, friendship, worship, and putting this in order, when I compare all these five and, and all that, I see that worship is the most important. Yes that you and I are made in the image of God, A for worship. And, and, and I want to bring this word to us, and God will teach us. In the book of Deuteronomy 6, 5, the Bible says, you shall love the Lord your God, you know, with all your heart, your mind, soul, spirit, and strength, and worship and serve him alone, and beside him of no other God. The Bible says in Exodus 23, 25, it says, and you will serve the Lord and you bless your bread and water. That word serve means worship. In Exodus 3.18, when Moses goes to talk to Pharaoh, he says, let my people go for a three days journey that they may offer sacrifice to me in the wilderness. Again, that offering sacrifice means worship. Uh, so uh, man is made in the image of God for worship. Uh, now listen to this. Many of us, erroneously or by mistake, we think and believe that worshiping God is a sideline issue, is a peripheral issue. It's like a by the way. You know, and then we think that other things like education, career, business, employment, you know, those are those are it's the main business. But that's not true. The truth is. Worshiping God is our main work. Is our main work. And uh, in my notes here I've written that uh, the call to worship God is ancient. It's not it began yesterday. No. Even the first uh, children of Adam and Eve, they, they, they began to worship. They began to look for God. They didn't have the trainings we have today. They didn't have a Bible in their hands. But they had... Um, a natural or a spontaneous inclination to worship. You see a kind bringing farm produce to present to God for worship. You see Abel offering the best of the animals to worship. And they didn't have 
an old covenant or a new covenant to learn from. So worship is inside of us, inside of us. So uh, worship is in each one of us. And worship is our main work. God called Abraham in Genesis 12. He called him. And if you look at the call of Abraham, God called him to become and to do. What did he call him to become? He called him to become, uh, uh, you know, to become a, a servant of God. <clears throat> to do what? He, he was sending him to the land of Israel. Uh, to do what? Worship. Why do I say that? When Abraham journeyed from Haran and came down and entered the, the land of promise, he began to build altars. He began to worship. He began to worship. And by Abraham worshiping in the land of Canaan, some people don't know, that is how he took the land for himself, for Isaac, for Jacob, for the nation of Israel, to this day, to this day. So worship is the main work. Is the main work. And let me take you back to when God sends Moses. Uh, he sends Moses uh, to Pharaoh in Egypt. Uh, and the Bible says, you know, God sent him with a message. The message was very simple. Let my people go, that they may worship me. Wow. And, and I always look at him. When these people went to, went out of Egypt, crossed the Red Sea, went into the desert, they were there for 40 years. If you look at these 40 years, it is interesting. Their main work was worship. They were not farming, they were not plowing, they were not doing industries, they were, they were not even taking children to school. You know, their work was just to wake up and worship. And God would feed them with manna from above. He would fight for them, pre, you, know, uh, you know, preserve them. And I believe, uh, even today, even today, if we could stay on the main work, how God would sort our issues? Wow, wow. Wow, you know, like I'm asking here, well, you know, why, why do we want God to deliver us from the coronavirus? Isn't that, that because that we go back to, to work, or just we go to work for food? My answer is no. That's not the main reason. God would heal us and deliver us from coronavirus that we may stay in the main work, which is to worship. Wow, and I'm calling you and myself, uh, you know, to consider worship seriously. Uh, even unto this day, God is calling individual nations, yes, great and small nations, poor and rich, weak and strong, to worship. Worshiping God is the main work of every nation. Uh, and, I, and I'm saying that worship is, uh, worship is vast, is high, is deep, is broad. It's like the universe. So what do I mean by this? Worship has so many ingredients. It is not one thing. Uh, so God is calling us to worship. And, and, and God needs worship. Uh, we, you know, to worship, uh, in simple language, according to me, it is to recognize God. It is to acknowledge God. It is to love God. It is to honor God. It is to praise and thank God from our hearts, through our lips. And it looks something small, but it means a lot to God. There are people who live, uh, you know, life without worship. They just wake up to go to work. They just wake up to go to college. They just wake up to work. They travel from one end of the earth to another, looking for more money, one more dollar, one more euro, one more shilling, one more rad. They, they are looking for money. But let me tell you, my viewer, and, and, and uh, where from wherever you are all over the world, your main work is worship. My main work right here in Kenya, right here in Africa, is worship. Worship is so important. I've written here, maybe, uh, maybe, I'm saying, maybe God, maybe God has around coronavirus, which has come with unprecedented I'm using words like lockdown, shutdown, clockdown, and curfews, <laughs> and the related, you know. Why has God allowed this? Why is life like shutting down? Why? I'm saying possibly, possibly our normal, our usual, and ordinary life activities, you know, 
like school, working, traveling, business, sports, entertainment, going to the beaches, all this have become idols. Yeah. And, and, and listen to this. From, from ancient days to today, God rebukes nations for idolatry. What is idolatry? Idolatry in simple language is anything, any place that you love more than God. And let me tell you today we have so many idols. So many idols. And one of the, one of the reasons maybe why God has allowed the COVID-19 is that to try to kind of to call us to attention, hey, your main work is not the college. No, it's not opening the business. Your main work is worshiping me. I can even provide for you even without reporting to work. But I know work is important. And I'm written here, Let, let's go back to hymns. Let's go back to songs. Let, let's go back to reading Bible verses in home, in the office, in the marketplace. You know, let, let us open, let us open the san church sanctuaries that have been closed for decades. My heart goes out to some countries in Europe. I always say, May the culture of worship come back. I think of Scotland, England, Wales, Northern Ireland. I have friends who live there. And they tell me that every two, three kilometers is a sanctuary. But there are no people. Oh, that's so bad. I'm say, I always say, this is being unfair to God. This is giving God a raw deal. You know, how can we fill up the stadiums for sports? Fill up the, the beaches. Fill up the clubs. But the house of God, there is no voice of worship. Let us go back to worship. I'm just saying, possibly God is pinching the nations. Possibly God is rebuking the nations. You know, that come back to the place of worship. And, I, and I've been saying, and I, and I say this to, to everyone around the globe, that uh, let us not live the prodigal life. What is prodigal life? Prodigal life is independent life doing what you want. You know, the, the father of the prodigal son had two sons. The younger one said, give me everything. I want to live my life. I want to go and be myself. And many people want that life, you know, kind of independence from God. You know, and, and they live a wild life, a sinful life. You know, and let me tell you, there are so many prodigal fathers, eh? mothers, grandparents, prodigal nation prodigal cities, prodigal countries and continents, where people are now doing their own things. They no longer consider God for worship. And I'm feeling God telling me, you know, you know, talk to yourself and talk to your people within your reach, even people who are within your reach through the social media platform like this one, that let us go back to worship. Worship is our main work. Worship is our main work. You know, I've written here in my notes, and I love this, that uh, if I was to ask you, uh, what is God's main food? What does God eat? I'll tell you the, what God eats. Let me tell you. From us, what God eats is worship. If we give God good worship, there is no blessing he cannot release into our lives. Wow. Imagine that. And when we deny God worship, even if we build cities, even if we build the biggest cruise ships and aircrafts and industries, you know, and have all the modern life as we call it, God is not interested. If he doesn't get worship from you and from me. And, and so today, I'm just talking about that. Let's give God the, the food he loves. And this food is worship. You know, worship is not complicated. It is telling God, thank you for now. Thank you for today. It is taking the basis. I always say when we worship, uh, we take the basis of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the blood of Jesus. That will give us a basis from which we can worship. And I want to encourage you that uh, even now when there is a lockdown and, uh, and a shutdown, bring your family together. Or even bring yourself together and say, now 
I will thank God. Personally, uh, the, today in the morning I was I was telling God, I want not I want to bring thanks. Possibly before the coronavirus, there were thanksgiving and worship I didn't bring to you. Even if I'm bringing the worship late, oh Lord, accept it. Accept it. You know, imagine there are nations that are very wealthy, but they have totally uh, disregarded worship. And, and, and imagine, you know, Canada come back to worship, Australia, you know, countries in Europe, you know, Singapore, South Korea, you know, from South Africa, from, from, from Sweden, from Netherlands. Let us bring worship to God. And it will surprise us how quickly God will eradicate the coronavirus. One of the medicine, one of the things that you can use and I can use is worship. Why? You know, when people worship God, God, that he cannot, he, he lacks power to restrain himself from blessing. Let me give you an example. One time the, the Philistines were moving against uh, Israel. And the Bible says at that time, Samuel was offering sacrifice. So Samuel is offering a sacrifice, and the Philistines are coming to attack. Just imagine when God is being given worship. And let me use the word Mandalay's Philistines. They want to come and invade and attack. Do you know what God did? The Bible says God thundered. He beat up the Philistines with thunders. Why? When we are giving God worship, he will handle our enemies quickly. Coronavirus is an enemy. One of the ways to provoke God to deal with our enemy, coronavirus, is worship. China, let's come and worship. Russia, India, Asia, you know, I love the Indochina countries, the Bangladesh, the Thailand, the, the, the Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam. You know, let's come and worship. Even the Far East, the Philippines, just come. Australians, let's come and worship. I, I know all over the world we love entertainment, leisure and pleasure. We love these things. But this time, let us leave those places. Let us get out of the beaches. Let us come and bring worship to God. Once again, these houses of worship in Canada, in, in the U.S., in Europe, that have been at the key and lock for many years and decay, let's open them up. You know, coronavirus will go away. But let's go back to worship. Praise the Lord. But allow, allow me to talk about what I love. is uh, is uh, is preparation for worship. Uh, anything that God would ask me to do or ask you to do, many times he'll ask you to do or the basic or the necessary preparation. Uh, worship is so important that it requires intentional and serious preparation. This is where we come to God with a broken and a contrite heart and we tell the Lord we have sinned against you, Lord forgive us. You know, let us learn from the people of Nineveh. They seriously repented from the preachings of Jonah. Uh, imagine, even if there are people who find like repentance is it's not, it's good. Why do we tell God to forgive us? So that we can prepare our hearts for worship. For the Bible says, you know, that um, God dwells in the, uh, you know, he is holy. That is God who dwells in the praises of Israel. Meaning, the one who receives worship is holy. So I want to encourage you, uh, you know, prepare for worship. Prepare for worship. From wherever you are in the world. Yes, if God says, leave this alone, leave that alone, you can deliberately leave that. I always tell people, what are we to lose? If we come, if we stop these things like the lesbian, the homosexuals, the drunkenness, the, you know, the you know, talking badly, all these things that the Bible says are wrong. Don't, don't fight with God. Don't, don't fight with God. If we just tell God, forgive us, and then we tell God, I always tell people, if we don't do sexual immorality, we are married. If I stay with my wife and I don't go with other women, I will not die. I will not die. I want to encourage you, let us do a preparation for worship. It's called repentance. 
and, uh, and God is willing to forgive us. Praise the Lord. And, and this time, because I want to pray, I want to pray. I want to pray for people who are in pain because of the coronavirus. When we pray, even when we have gone astray, even when we have sinned against God, just imagine, God has no other people. It is you, it is me. So when we come back to him in humility and faith, he will forgive us. So I, I, I want, uh, shortly I will pray for the countries that are hard hit with the COVID-19. I know there is pain in places like Italy, in Spain, in the UK, in the US, uh, and, and uh, in China, and all over the world. And I will pray that God forgive us. And I will pray God heal us for worship. Just let me tell you again. Let us not tell God to take away coronavirus. Just that we may go back to the place of work. That is not a strong reason enough. I would say, God, heal me from this disease that I may worship. There is someone who was healed by Jesus. And immediately he began to serve Jesus. Wow. So even now, why God wants to heal us from the coronavirus is what God is missing worship from Italy, from Spain, you know, from Grenada, from Barbados. You know, he's missing worship from Bolivia, from Ecuador, from Alaska. God is missing worship. Even from right here, I, I live in a place called Ruiru, you know, and Kenya. God loves worship. And I want to encourage you, uh, you know, viewers, you listen to me, you know, let us joyfully come back to the place of worship. Amen? And uh, may the Lord bless you so much. And I want to say again, our main work is worship. I would repeat in endless times, your main work is worship. You know, worship in your bedroom, in the sitting room, bring your family together. Once again, I say, read a hymn, sing a Bible song, you know, let one of your family members read a Bible verse, another pray, another worships. All these small, small acts put together, they mean a lot to God. Yes, and let us not Harden our hearts. I believe one of the I, I believe the coronavirus has come and God is speaking many things. Not one thing. No. God is speaking several things to the world, to humanity at the same time. And one of them, we come back to God. And coming back to God is coming back to worship. So wherever you are, remember to tell Jesus thank you. Even if you are sick, imagine. You can begin to worship right there where you are very sick. You can tell Jesus, I love you. I worship you. Whatever years or time you, days you give me to live, I worship you. Forgive me my sins. Jesus, I love you. So let us come back to the place of worship. And may the Lord bless you. And I want to say a prayer for every one of us. In Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for myself and everyone watching me. And my prayer is that you will bring us back to the place of worship. Many of us have forgotten. We have ignored. We have been too busy with our, with our own things, like the prodigal son. But now, Lord, I pray in your mercy and grace, bring us back to yourself and to the place of worship, to the main work where you made us, why you created us in your image, and it is the place of worship. May we come back to worship. Wherever we are on the face of it, however rich, however influential, even the gospel celebs, even the, 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 the economic celebs, even, even all them, all these are people who are celebrities in different ways. May we all come back to worship. May we tell God, now we come back as prodigals and we come back to worship. So God, we pray for the nations which are very hard hit. We pray for healing. We pray not just because we may go back to work, not just because we may go back to our families, but healing, so that we may come back to the place of worship. Father, bless the nations, bless the church, and bring us back to the main work, O oh Father, which is worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you and keep me too. And when we meet again, I want to talk again about worship. Worship, the main work. Thank you.